And I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible I aim you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we some warriors, they ain't caught gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my strap, put on the beat, put on the map, put on my team, take out every motherfucker in between. Know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rap, better my name. Killing rappers on my hang, I'm but they chase for the fame. Never thought I would, and now I'm running. You don't wanna follow me, no my... What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Steve the Kidney Nurse. I am your host, Steve Belcher. Man, this is going to be a fantabulous show tonight. Look. Wherever you're watching, share this video, all right, or share this broadcast because this show is especially for kidney warriors uh, because the holidays are coming up, uh, you're eating. So we got Chef Dave here to uh, show how to prepare a simple meal uh, that takes less than an hour that's kidney friendly. You remember Chef Dave, he was on that show Maybe about two to three weeks ago, we interviewed him. So uh, before I bring him on again, share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. We're, we're broadcasting on YouTube, Steve the Kidney Nurse, uh, Facebook page, Urban Health Outreach Media, uh, Facebook and YouTube channel, also on Twitter. So without further ado, let me give him the VIP uh, intro and bring on none other than Chef Dave. Here we go. Chef Dave, what's going on? There we go. Let's, go. let's try this again. <laughs> hey, what's How going you doing on, today, Chef Steve? Dave? How I'm you doing? doing phenomenal. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. So happy holidays to you, man. What's what's going on with you during the holidays? So my family has a tradition of the holidays. And it's a tradition of every Jewish family that I've ever met is Chinese food. 
And what, what I'm, <laughs> believe it or not, as crazy as that sounds, Chinese at this time of year, it it's works out wonders. Um, so let what I'm going to take you through. What's that? Let me ask you something. That's interesting that you mentioned Chinese food because isn't Chinese food um, high in sodium? It can be. Chinese food could be very high in sodium depending on the soy sauce that you're using, depending on the ingredients you're using. I'm going to show you guys how to make it low sodium, okay, low potassium, and low phosphorus. We're not using tofu. That's a high phosphorus item. We're not using that. We're going to actually be using chicken. I'm going to show you guys how I marinate it. And I'm actually going to do a stir-fried chicken and vegetable tonight. Okay, We're man. Using- no, I was going to say, um, let me get you a uh, full view. And uh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. Hold on. <coughs> there we go. That's not what I Hold on. All right, Dave, I'm going to give you the screen, all right? Sounds good. Then let you start. So tell us what you're doing right now. So right now I'm just getting my pots hot. Um, I'm going to take you through everything that I'm going to use. You know, we're using shiitake mushrooms over using white mushrooms. Because white mushrooms, as you know, are a high potassium source. Don't mind the fire. So you said mushrooms are high in uh, what? Potassium? Yep. White mushrooms particularly are very high in potassium, and what they found is shiitakes, uh, maitakes, tend to be lower. So we're actually going to use a little bit of those in our dish today. I'm doing eggplant, and I'll show you guys. Right here I got eggplant that I've already diced. I actually soaked this with salt. I tossed it with salt, and I'm going to rinse this off before we use it. What that does is it takes that bitter flavor out of it. Okay, it pulls out all the waters, it pulls out all the bitters. Okay, okay. Okay, and we're going to marinate the chicken. I'm going to show you guys how to make a delicious basmati rice uh, using a combination of both brown basmati or black rice. You can make this with just black rice. It doesn't matter. Okay, really is up to you what you want to use with it. Now, my chicken, I already have that sliced down, sliced out, ready to go. Is that just a chicken breast? Yep. Just straight up chicken breast, high protein, low fat. Okay. So so what we're going to do is we're going to actually, I'm going to actually start to get this all together. So, so Dave. I actually have a a carbon steel pot pan that I use for it. Okay. So Dave, um, share with the audience, you uh, dealt with kidney disease, right? Yeah, so I am a uh, kidney recipient. I spent four and a half years on dialysis. And, okay. um, you know, I'm a 10-year recipient. And what I can tell you is that dialysis was hard. Food-wise was really hard because there were things that I loved that I just haven't been able to eat. Everything. Can you some of those foods? What's that? Can you name some of those foods that you weren't able to eat? Oh, yeah. Tomatoes, potatoes, citrus, bananas, dark leafy greens. So collards went out the window. You know, spinach went out the window. Um, You know, there's a ton of different things. Root vegetables, potatoes, tomato, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Turnips were really the only thing I could eat. Just because I want needed to watch my potassium, my body absorb potassium like it's nobody's business, and that actually put me in the hospital once. All right, share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. What's that? No, I was telling the audience to share the broadcast. Oh yeah, definitely share this out. Now, now, Dave, this is a kidney friendly meal, correct? One hundred percent. <clears throat> we're doing this low potassium. We're going to do this today, low potassium, 
low phosphorus, and low sodium. For my salt source that I use is this right here. I use Bragg's liquid amino pretty much. I used it for everything when I was on dialysis. It was a godsend because it's lower sodium than a low sodium soy sauce. Okay. And it's got 16 amino acids in it. Now, show so, that again. Bragg's liquid aminos. And literally, this is nothing more than the soy protein and water. That's it. Wow. You know, this has a total sodium, 310 milligrams per serving, and that's what in per teaspoon. Most soy sauces that are low sodium are about 500. So this is actually a little bit lower than low sodium. Okay. 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 But you need you still need that little bit of a salt source to be able to bring all the flavors forward. Got you. So we're going to start off with our rices. Now I like to do my rices in combination. Okay, you could use just a straight brown rice if you wanted. We're actually going to use a little bit of uh, black rice and basmati rice, brown basmati. In combination, they take the same amount of time, and their measurements of water are the same. The only difference is the brown rice, the black rice that I have here, actually needs to be washed. So we're going to just measure out about a quarter cup. And we want to rinse it. Okay, we want to soak this for a few minutes. It takes off any dust. It takes out, you know, any anything that could be in it. Same thing with the basmati. It also pulls off some of that coloring. So that way, all of our rice does not turn black on us. Going to strain this. Yeah, it's really interesting. Holiday times, Christmas time. This is actually one of my go-tos. Especially when I was on dialysis. I was looking for something simple. You know, couldn't beat it. And you can make this at home at a fraction of what it would cost you to go to the restaurant. Now, how much would a meal that you're preparing tonight, what would be the average cost? How much could you prepare this meal for? Well, to prepare it yourself, you're looking at, this is two chicken breasts right here. I believe that we paid like three nineteen for them. You know, um, all the vegetables and everything included, it's a 4 or $5 meal at home when you're going to go out and spend about, 10, 12, $15, depending on how, who's making it, how it's being made. Absolutely. And it's a thing they going out. Um, and if one is on a kidney disease diet or kidney friendly diet, they really don't have any control when they go out on uh, how they prepare that meal. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Now, how long have you been a chef, Dave? So I've been cooking since I've been 14 years old. You know, I've wow. worked in multiple restaurants. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been at it for a while. So, so cooking at 14, this basically prepared you to deal with the um, – dietary restrictions with kidney disease. Well, it was it was crazy because, you know, things that I used to love to make, I had to relearn how to do. You know, I had to reteach myself how to how to cook for where I was because not only was it about, you know, the potassium, the sodium, the phosphorus, but it was also about taste. You know, on dialysis because we got those iron shots, 
every time we go onto the machine to make sure that our protein and our, you know, in our blood stays high. Um, all I could taste was iron. And, and, and Dave, yeah. uh, this is not just good for uh, patients that are on dialysis, but someone that's um, in any one of the five stages of kidney disease could probably benefit okay. from this as well, correct? Absolutely. I'm using a low-sodium uh, chicken stock, by the way, to cook my rice in. It'll, it'll okay. let it flavor without a lot of sauce. Uh, you uh, could uh, make your own at home. Uh, just uh, chicken bones, roasted chicken bones. And it will work out just as well. Um, but actually, a lot of stuff I have tried to do at home. Got you, got you. You know, when you're on dialysis, you don't have the energy to always cook everything that you want. Right. I found right. that sodium chicken sauce, chicken stock was a great alternative to using bases. Bases are really high in salt. But you know what, Dave? You, you said something that was very important. You said um, when you're on dialysis or when you come home, you know, you don't feel like cooking or, you know, you feel washed out. So okay. say if someone has a caregiver or a partner, this right here, by seeing what you're doing, can kind of give them, a, you know, a little bit of uh, information and understanding on, uh, preparing a uh, kidney friendly diet. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the fact is, is that you don't always have energy to do this. I know half the time when I was on dialysis, my wife would be the one taking care of dinner on Tuesdays, especially because that was my first day of the week of dialysis after two days of not being on the machine. Gotcha. Those were not fun days. Those weren't fun at all. So I'm just rinsing my uh, eggplant. They've been sitting with salt for the past 15 minutes. Rinsing them off will take a good portion of that salt off. So what was and the purpose of, let me ask you, what was the purpose of uh, soaking them in salt? So by tossing them with salt, you actually take a lot of that bitter flavor you ever have like an eggplant parm and you get that bitter taste at the back end? Okay. You know, it takes that. It takes the bitters out. It help. It helps to take out a little bit of that of the, of um, whatever it is that causes that. Okay, and but you still can wash some off, but some still remains. Yeah, you're still going to have a little bit of sodium left. Um, you don't have to, at the, but peeling the skin. Dicing them, tossing them with salt for about 10 or 15 minutes, rinsing them, really makes life easy. Okay. So my chicken I have here nice and thinly sliced. It's going to cook very, very, very quick. I'm going to do a quick marinade on this. I have a little jar garlic and sliced garlic and ginger mix that I'm going to use. Now, by adding my brags to this, I can cut down the amount that I actually have to add to the uh, dish. And this is a combination here of black rice vinegar and uh, mirin. Okay, it'll help to break down the protein and really kind of bring out all the flavors. And the fact that I sliced this so thin to begin with, it's not going to take long. Okay. Wow. So what yeah. you just like um, marinate it for how long? This is not going. To, this isn't going to need long. This is going to take a couple of minutes. While this is marinating, though, we're going to start to cook off our veg. Okay. All right. I have a little bit of light olive oil that I like to use. I combine that with sesame oil. The light olive oil has a higher um, cooking temp. 
so it won't burn. The sesame oil is a little bit lower, so together it keeps things, keeps your flavor. Now I have a carbon steel pan that I'm using that I, season, that I actually will season afterwards with oil, a little lemongrass, a little bit of salt, cook it down in there, get everything charred in there just to get that flavor into the carbon. And I'll just wipe it down, pop it in the oven for a minute, and then got my flavor in there for the next time. So this is going to cook really quickly. Now I got shiitake mushrooms. I got some broccoli. I have sliced carrots and my eggplant, all of which are safe for someone who's on dialysis. For onions, I'm using green onions. I just like adding them at the very end, just the flavor that they give to everything. I tend to bring everything out. So while our chicken is sitting here marinating, I'll bring you guys over so you can see. See the pot okay there, Steve? Yes, sir. That's awesome, Dave. Yes. Awesome, awesome. All right. I'm giving you the whole screen. Cool. So I start off with my ginger and garlic. Now, this is a very thin metal pot. It's going to cook very, very, very quickly. I go by level of how hard something is. Ginger and garlic, because you want that to cook out. You don't want any of the bitter flavors. And you want that flavor to go throughout your entire dish. Next, we dump in our carrots. And our peppers. Notice I didn't add the chicken yet. It's so thin, I don't want it to dry out. I want it to stay soft. Just going to give this a minute to cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can start to smell the ginger and the garlic, the peppers, the carrots. All those flavors are starting to meld together and come through. Going to give that a minute. And by the way, you don't have to do this in a uh, in a wok. You can actually do this in a regular saute pan. How I learned, I actually learned a lot about Asian cooking when I was working at a restaurant in Philadelphia. Right. Hey, Dave. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you turn your device horizontal, sideways? Sure. Okay, that's much better. All right, you can continue with the story. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. But I worked at a restaurant downtown in Philly. Oh, tilt the camera up just a little bit. Just a teeny bit. Like that? Perfect. Please. 
You were saying you worked in Philly? Yeah, a restaurant in Philadelphia where um, they did a combination of South American and Chinese cuisine. So I got to learn to use the wok a lot. All right, I just added my mushroom to turn the heat up. Now, Dave, how much does a wok cost? You know, it really depends on where you go. I've seen them um, as low as 10 to $15 or as high as 40 or $50, depending on uh, where you get it from, the quality. You know, this is one that I've had for years. I can't even remember what I paid for it. I've had it for that long, but I know that this is just a cheap, lightweight carbon steel, which means I have to cure it. You know, it will rust if I'm not careful. All right, so everything's starting to cook together. We're going to take a second, check our rice. So you can see, the black is still coming through, but you can see that the bosom, the white of the basmati. God still has some time on that. All right, now we're going to add our eggplant and our chicken. Start to get that all to cook in and cook together. And notice, I really haven't added any more liquid aminos to this. Just a little bit of the chicken with the garlic and ginger. <clears throat> a little bit of salt that I used to soak the eggplant with. Oh, yeah. Can you smell that? No? No? Okay. Yeah, I can smell it all the way here in D.C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that looks good, Dave. It's so good. Now our chicken is what's going to create our sauce with the vinegar, the, the liquid aminos, and the mirin. I left them nice long strands. Spread it out. Give it a minute to sit. Now, if you wanted to add heat to this, say you're on dialysis and you have, you can't taste subtle flavors. We could add a couple of Thai chilies to that. You know, a little sriracha works. There are so many different kind of chili sauces, sambal. Or you could give it Korean flavors and go with gochujang, which is a hot chili, chai, uh, a Korean hot chili paste. Or, um, and a little fish sauce in there. Just to give it a little different flavor. You could. This is a recipe you could really play with and change. Hey, Dave, that looks really good, man. It, it looks really good. Thank you. What does our audience think? Oh, they love it. They love it. And they can see it much better with your device turned sideways. Awesome. And now I'm just going to add my broccoli and scallions to this. <laughs> I 
Last two ingredients. And we'll taste it up once the chicken cooks. And the cool thing is, this entire time, the rice has been cooking. Now, I'm doing it stove top, but you could get small rice cookers for 20, 30 bucks that make enough for a couple of portions. A little bit more brothy. We're going to add a little stock to a little bit more stock to this. Guys, share this video, share this broadcast. We giving it up. All right, all right. We giving it up with Chef Dave. Share this broadcast. You're not going to get this nowhere else on the internet cooking kidney-friendly meals in mm -hmm. real time. Okay? Share this now, broadcast. So other warriors and their family members can see this, and they can go over to Chef Dave's uh, page. He's going to give you that information yeah. uh, once he's finished. He got uh, cooking tips. He got recipes. I mean, this guy's on fire. So we're just going to let that sit for a minute, and we'll talk hey, a little bit Sherry, about that. Thanks for watching. God bless you, Sherry. That's my big sister, Cherry, watching. Oh. Cool. Yeah. So, so a little information. My nonprofit, Cooking Without Kidneys, as you know, it has a TV show. Okay. All about helping people who are on dialysis not just survive but thrive through food. Um, we are still accepting do donations on GoFundMe at cookingwithoutkidneys.live if interested. Um, I also have my blog, wordpress.com, uh, Cooking Without Kidneys, obviously. You know, if you just want to check out the recipes and try them at home. The whole idea is to give people who are on dialysis the opportunity to not just see the food, not just see a recipe, but actually have a chance to try it. Okay? I can show you this recipe, but if you were to cook it yourself and experience it yourself, you're more likely to actually do it yourself. You know what I mean? And that's the whole point is to really kind of give people that opportunity. So with your help and donation, we appreciate it. And Dave, let me ask you, you, you said something very important that you want to show people how to uh, cook this. What, what kind of feeling does that give someone such as yourself? Like if, if you, if you on dialysis and you come home but you, you muster the strength to cook a meal. How satisfying can that be uh, to someone? It's quite. I mean, just, just knowing that you're giving people an opportunity. You're not just shoving them a recipe in their face going, here, try this. Okay? The plan is, is coming this March, we're planning on starting to do demos and competitions. So really looking for the help financially. But once we start those, it's going to be all for dialysis patients. It's going to be Sundays when units are closed. So anyone and everyone will be able to actually come, try the food, see what's going on, smell what people are cooking, and actually participate and be given an opportunity to create it themselves. Can't ask for more than that, you know? And again, not only that, but even for caregivers as well. Yeah. This isn't just for people who are on dialysis, you know. Um, I've had a couple people sit there and go, well, if I go on a full high-protein dialysis diet prior to going onto the machine, uh, would that be safe? And the truth is, is no. <laughs> you know, some of these, some dishes occasionally, yeah, like the stir-fry, the, you know, our Korean barbecue uh, ribs that I did, and that's coming up on the show in January, um, you know are great occasionally, but really what I figured was prior to dialysis, 
I was on a very high vegetable, very low protein diet. But when I went on to dialysis, I switched it to a very high protein diet with low de- low vegetables, you know, because I just couldn't eat them. All right. So we are at that point. So chicken, then they click, pulls right apart. Mm -hmm. We're going to adjust the seasonings just a little bit. It's nice, it's tender, it's soft. It's got really good flavor. Broke it down very well. Could use just a pinch more seasoning. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of Bragg's. And me personally, I like a little bit of heat. We're going to just add a, just a touch of sriracha to that. Yeah, when I was on dialysis, all I could taste were spicy foods. All right. Yeah, that and the spicy food can cause you to be uh uh cause you to be more thirsty. Hey Nishonda, thanks for watching. Happy holidays to you. But does it spicy um food cause you to be more thirsty? Well, for me, and you got to get, this is actually just me. Mm-hmm. So, spicy foods was all I could taste. So it didn't make me more thirsty. Okay. It really didn't. I, I was, yeah, I was always low as far as, um, water intake as it is. I'm a chef. I work in a kitchen. Okay. You know, so as I'm running around, I forget to do things like drink. Actually, that's how I met my wife was I forgot to drink. Do I prefer gas stoves? Yes, I prefer gas stoves over electric any day. Um, I prefer gas stoves just because you can control the heat better. There's no cool down time. It's all instantaneous. You're all damn close. My oven range, it's really interesting. My stove range, I love it being gas. My oven can be electric. Less hot spots develop. Yeah, same here. Same here, Sherry. I love it hot. I love it spicy. Add a little sriracha, a little. I'm not sure if you answered the question. Jared wants to know, do you prefer gas stoves? Oh, yeah. The answer to that was yes. Oh, okay. There's no way around it. I <laughs> Gas over. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. What if a warrior has an electric stove? Say someone lives in an apartment and it's not a uh, gas stove but electric. Uh, what what kind of recommendations could you have for that person? You could do this just in a regular saute pan. Uh, if you're going to do a wok, you could actually buy an electric wok that, w- that you could use as a separate cooking unit all to itself. You know, but in all honesty... A saute pan, you could do this in just fine. So, shift you guys for a second. Hey, Jared, if you're watching, I don't know why I got this green glow around me. (laughs) 
Have you been to Jersey lately? I'm just asking for you know, asking as a <laughs> No, I haven't. All right. Now, Dave, this meal that you prepared, you prepared, is it a one, one meal for two people? So what I made here is this is this is good for two two to four people. Okay, there's enough rice. I'm going to show you guys this in a second. I'm about to start plating. It. Okay, you can make this for two to four people. It's only two breasts of chicken. Okay. So as you can see, our rice is light and fluffy. You can tell the basmati from the uh, black. It didn't all get washed out. And no dish is complete without something to garnish it with. Man, that looks good. Oh, my God. <laughs> so there's a pinch of salt in this. Okay. However, this is still low sodium. Furikake is a combination of sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, and nori, which is seaweed. Or just using a little bit to garnish over the top. Help that flavor along. Guess who's coming to? You're on my on your way here. Okay, I'm in Philadelphia. If you if you figure out where my what my address is, I'll be impressed. I'll feed you. All right. Let's see what you got there. Oh yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, can you tilt the camera down just a little bit? Oh, yeah. No problem. As you can see, it's low sodium. Oh, man, that looks good. Everything's cooked. Dang. Mushrooms are cooked perfect. Just that little bit of um, rags was all I needed at the end there. It, a little bit of heat from the sriracha actually brought out the flavor of the ginger and the garlic also. Most of that salt flavor from the eggplant has either been cooked out or washed away when I rinsed it. And this is what we cook, this is in my house, how we do our holiday Christmas dinner. Oh, it's been Chinese, it's been tradition for years. Mm. Enjoy guys. Man, I, man, that looks so good, man. I mean, my mouth is over here watering looking at that, man. <laughs> my God, that, wow, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Like I said, our show, the uh, Cooking Without Kenny show is going to premiere in January. Um, and right now we're saving up to record more, more episodes. So... And if anybody wants to donate, you can go to GoFundMe, Cooking Without Kidneys, live. Right, is right. Where, is where you'll find it. Man, so how long did it take you to make that meal, to prepare? Total? About 40 minutes at most. Wow. And, you know, 40 minutes opposed to someone getting in that car, driving, going to a restaurant, sitting down, waiting eating, getting mm -hmm. up, coming back home, when you could have prepared a dinner in the comfort of your own home. Hey, Jen. Hey, Jen. How are you? The show, cool thing, thing. show Jen that uh, plate right quick. Before I destroy it all. There you go. This is what we call holiday meal in uh, my house. Now, 
Brown, can you just say what ingredients again did you use to prepare that? Yep. So I have a combination here of black and basmati rice that I cooked together. I washed them both a couple of times, put them into a pot, cooked through a cover over top of them, cooked it in chicken stock. Um, then I took my chicken, I marinated that in a combination of Bragg's liquid amino because it, that is low sodium. Um, ginger, garlic, rice wine, which is mirin, and uh, black rice vinegar. I then had eggplant that I salt soaked and then rinsed and washed really well because I wanted to get the bitter flavor out. I didn't want the bitters in there. And then we got the broccoli, the carrots, you know, scallions, ginger, garlic, bell peppers. Oh, yeah. It's an all-in-one, low-sodium, high-energy meal, high-protein meal. Enjoy. Steve? Wow, wow. Show one more time. I want to see it one more time, man. That looks good. Damn. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, man, that's that's awesome. That is that is so awesome, man. Uh, for you to come on and show uh, one example of many meals that can be made at home in the comfort of your own home and at a low price, it doesn't break the bank. No, like I said, a lot of the a lot of the ingredients I used here can be used for other things too. You know, you could do mm -hmm. stir fries. You could actually go the opposite route and do Italian eggplant. You could do, you know, a bunch of stuff with the broccoli. It's all versatile. That's the whole idea is you pay once for an ingredient. Like, say you buy a high-grade rice. Spend, what, 8 to $10, you know, on like a small one-pound bag of black rice. That'll last me five meals. And if I cut it with like a basmati or a long-grain brown rice, that cuts the cost even further because I'm using it for more things. Got you. Got you. Wow. Wow, man. This is this has been an awesome show, man. Um again, man, tell people where uh your information where they can find you and uh you know reach out to. So you can look at my website um cooking without kidneys wordpress.com okay the recipe we'll put up there. Um, you could also check out, I have a TV show coming out on Eat This TV called Cooking Without Kidneys. It's actually part of my nonprofit. Yeah, I use a low sodium stock. I don't use, I don't use, um, if I don't use a low sodium stock, it's because I made my own. I don't use base. You know, I don't buy pre-made sauces. I do all that myself. Just for the simple fact is, is I want to control the amount of salt, the amount of sodium, the amount of potassium or phosphorus that's in there. A lot of times when you buy that jar of, you know, Alfredo sauce or those mixtures of, um, you know, different Chinese stir-fry sauces and this and that, a lot of times there's a lot of sugar in those. There's a lot of preserves. Sometimes it's potassium sorbate that they use to preserve it. So to avoid that, I make a lot of it myself. You know, uh, but it's low sodium stock that I buy from the store or I'll make my own. If I have bones, I'll make my own stock. Oh, Dave, one question Jen asked. Uh, what do you think is the approximate cost of the meal for four people? I mean, you know, when you turn around, buy all the ingredients, bring it home, you're probably going to spend about 20 bucks. You know, especially if you're only using like a brown rice, just a basic brown rice. You don't have to get black rice. Thank you. Yeah, I hope I get the funding too. <laughs> yes, yes, man. Um, this is, this is, man, this is awesome that you're doing this, Dave. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's other people in the kidney space that are chefs that, that are doing this, but for you to take it a step further and 
do a TV show to get it out worldwide is incredible, man, because it, it, it just gives people hope that even if they're diagnosed with kidney disease or kidney failure and they got to resort to a kidney diet, that it doesn't have to be a bland, gloom and doom diet as... It doesn't have to be boring at all. Yes. I mean, you'll see if you if you watch my show, I make tacos. We have, we do tacos. There's no tomatoes, no citrus, no potato, none of it. We do we did a Korean barbecue, um, short rib. You know, low sodium, near near to low potassium. We made our own kimchi for it, the whole nine yards. So you'll see a bunch of different recipes that we're putting together. They're all from different regions of the world, just so that way you could actually see how, how what you could do with different cultures. And when we start doing demos and competitions, it's going to be chefs from everywhere. The demos, it'll probably be mainly me. I'll have a, I'll have a couple of chefs that I'm talking to right now about joining our demos when we start them in March. Um, and from there in, we're going to start doing some competitions. And I'm hoping to bring a good group of people out. I got a lot of people behind it, and we'll see what happens. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, man, we come down to the hour again. Uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule and preparing a kidney-friendly meal uh, under one hour that is that is very healthy uh, for anyone, not just for uh, patients who have kidney disease. So yep. I, again, can you just give your information one more time where people can find you and any uh, shout outs that you want to give before we end this broadcast? Yep. You can find me on cookingwithoutkidneys.wordpress.com. My GoFundMe is Cooking Without Kidneys Live. It, that supports the television show. It also supports our first few demos that we're starting. So whoever gives to that, you're giving to the good, to a good cause. Um, we are also you can also find me on Eats This TV, Cooking Without Kidneys. The pilot is still out there. January you'll start to see our the episodes roll out too. Um, trying to think where else. Find me on Facebook, Cooking Without Kidneys. I have a Twitter account. You know, so I'm across social media. And you can look it up by my name, too, David Pollard. All right. All right, man. Dave, thanks so much for coming on, uh, Steve, the kidney nurse, man. And look forward to having you back on uh, in the near future for uh, we still got New Year's. But I'm saying look forward to bring you back on for another a uh, short meal that you can prepare that's simple that anyone can use if they need to. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was my pleasure to be here, Steve. I appreciate you and everything right. you're doing for the cause. All right. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it, man. So take care, man. Happy holiday, and I'll be in touch. Thank you. Have a great night. All right. You too, Dave. Thank you. Yep. So, guys, this was a, wait a minute, let me turn this overlay off. There we go. Not sure why the, uh, almost like a filter that's over my face, but this was an awesome show. And look, guys, there's a lot of shows out here that you can watch. So we appreciate you here at Urban Kidney Alliance and Urban Health Outreach Media for taking the time and watching these shows. We try to uh, stand out from the rest because there's so many great shows out there that you should be watching. Uh, um, uh, Hope with Jonathan, Transplant Talk with Nishanda, The Warrior's Quest Show, uh, Kidney Stories with Uncle Jim, Bella's Hope, uh, Bella's Hope for Healing. So there's... A lot of shows out here to get educated on kidney disease, kidney dialysis information. We just try to come up with uh, other ways to show you what's going on in the kidney space 
and how to navigate through this process if you are diagnosed with kidney disease or if you're already on dialysis. So keep watching for some great shows in the beginning of the year. Stay tuned for the Warriors Quest show tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. right back here on the Urban Health Outreach Media Network. And while I have, I want to thank the TikTok community. I mean, these guys bless me and they shot me up from 8,900 followers to almost 25,000 followers within a 12 day period. That's incredible. So I'd like to again, thank the TikTok community for uh, supporting me uh, in this short period of time. So guys, continue to watch the shows. We'll be back with great content and we look forward to seeing you again soon. With that being said, thank you guys. God bless you and happy holidays to you. This is Steve Belch, I'm out, peace. Around, don't get caught in the mosh pit Fuel to the fire, ain't nobody can stop it Trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip and I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible I aim you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we some warriors, they ain't caught gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my strap, put on the beat, put on the map, put on my team Take out every motherfucker in between, know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rap, better my name Killing rappers on my hang, I'm about to change for the fame Never thought I would, and now I'm running You don't wanna follow me, no motherfucking Now I got a ride or